Heavenly Father, we pray you would open our eyes to see your word this morning. And on this Harvest Sunday, we pray we would see and trust that you give us what we need. Amen. Now, I gave a few of you uh, a test this morning as, uh, as you came in. If that was you, Jacob, Micah, Esther, do you want to come up to the front? Thank you very much for doing that for me. Now, I gave these guys a packet of, uh, a few packets of sweets uh, with the test. How many people could they give them out to and not eat any themselves? Uh, and if they did so, I promised them there would be more sweets. They had to trust, didn't they? that I would have some of those sweets. So, uh, hands up if you got a Haribo given to you by Jacob this morning. Oh yeah, nice. That's quite a few hands. Great. Brilliant. Nice spread. Good job. Right, and uh, if you got some squashies from Micah and Esther this morning, raise your hand. Yeah, nice. Good. Hands up there as well. Okay, and hands up if you were offered a sweet this morning, but you rejected it because you are... uh, There we go. Fee Jameson. Fee Alston, sorry. Health queen. Uh, Very good. Well, well done, guys. Great job there. And as promised, there are many more sweets than you were giving out. I'll give those at the end of the service so that they're not a distraction. But let's give those guys a round of applause. Thank you very much. You can sit down. Thanks, guys. I did give out another packet of sweets this morning, though. Um, I can't remember. Who was? Oh, yeah, yeah, Ben. Ben, come on. back. Not too shy to come up to the front. Come on, come on. Nice, nice. Uh, d- d- <laughs> Did anyone receive sweets from Ben this morning? No. Oh, did, did, ben, did, you off, did you offer them people just rejecting it? Ben, what's happened here? Oh, mate, you just... It just looks so tasty. Yeah. All right, well, go sit down. Come on. <laughs> Poor job. Hey. Right, can't get the staff. Right. Like I mentioned, those guys, they had to trust me, didn't they? That as they gave out their sweets, that there would be extra sweets. Uh, Some of them did really well. Some of them, like Ben, failed. And uh, uh, maybe a better illustration would have been had I got people up to the front and done like a trustful exercise, but I just didn't back myself enough to do that. The risk of it going wrong was too high. Uh, But a, a bit like that test with the sweets, or had we had a trustful exercise at the front, Well, in our passage today, God gives a test, a good test, to his people, the Israelites, and it's to help them to learn to trust that God gives us what we need. So Exodus chapter 16, that's where we're at. Uh, We join the Israelites, God's people, in the wilderness. It's been one month since they've been rescued from Egypt. You know, God sent the ten plagues. He's parted the, uh, the Red Seas. And here we are, one month later, and the people are hungry. This is what they say. If only uh, we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve. (laughs) On one hand, you've got to feel for the Israelites, haven't you? Um, You know, this isn't like they can go out for a walk in the Lakes District and and come back and enjoy some nice pub food. And it's not like uh, the Great North Run where there's always that one crazy guy who carries a fridge on his back. No, there are no fridges, they're in the desert, and there is no food. Uh, So we do feel a bit sorry for the Israelites here. Uh, But on the other hand... uh, what are they talking about? Uh, better that we died in Egypt. Uh, at least we ate all the food that we wanted there. What? They were slaves in Egypt. Uh, burdened. A pharaoh had brought in a rule to kill every Israelite baby boy. Egypt was not a good place. And do they not remember uh, what has happened in this last year? Uh, God has rescued them from Egypt with ten plagues. Uh, When they were trapped between the waters and Pharaoh's armies, God rescued them by parting the Red Sea. And when they were super thirsty in the wilderness, they came across this bitter, yucky water. But Moses cried out and God rescued them. He made the water sweet. Uh, God has heard their cries... And he's given them what they needed. But clearly they haven't learned, have they? They're grumbling again at Moses. You've brought us here to starve. And so God gives them a test to help uh, teach them to trust him that God gives them what they need. 
And so for that, I'm going to need two Israelites helpers. Yes, Jesse, do you want to come up? Oliver, come on. You come up as well. Lovely. Thank you. Come to the front. Like. Lovely. Thank you. Right. Okay. You are Israelites, and you are out in the desert. And so let's give you some appropriate headwear. Lovely. Yeah, you can put that on yourself. Uh, excellent. So we're now... Uh, that's excellent. I was going to put it that way as well. Um, <laughs> We're well protected from the sun, but we're also camping out in the wilderness, aren't we? So we're going to need a tent as well. So here we go. Here is a tent for us, if I can get it up. Oh, lovely. There we go. We are all set for our wilderness expedition. Right. So you were super hungry, but uh, I don't know if you remember, as we read earlier, uh, God sent meat in the evening. Uh, birds just start appearing, uh, quail. Apparently it's a bit of a mix, uh, the taste of like chicken and duck. So come on, yeah, fetch the hoisin sauce and the wraps. God is good. And so we're going to bed uh, quite happy tonight, probably wondering what is for breakfast. Uh, so off you go uh, to bed, uh, you know, get, your, get yourselves comfy in the tent. You can't zip the tent up. No, that would, uh, that would lengthen our talk quite a lot. Come on, get in there. Get in. Lovely. Excellent. Right. And so uh, off they go to bed. Uh, maybe they read a bedtime story. Maybe they sing a little lullaby a song. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Close your eyes. You're asleep. How I wonder. Close your eyes. Once you are up above the world so high like the diamond in the sky. And in the morning, they wake up. And they peek outside the tent. And they see this weird, uh, flaky, kind of bread-like thing on the floor. Guess who forgot their bread this morning? So we're using uh, biscuits instead. You'll have to use your imagination. Uh, They peek outside the tent and they say, Huh? What is it? They say, Huh? What is it? Uh, This is good enough. (laughs) And so they come out the tent. Come out the tent. Come out. And this is what Moses says. Uh, Read it with me up there. It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Okay, they're to gather as much as they need. So we're told uh, that some of them gathered up just a little bit. So here we are, sir. You gathered up just a little bit. Excellent. And some of them, oh, they gather up loads. They just couldn't get enough of this stuff. Oh, their stuff in their face is full of it. But whether they had a little bit or loads, uh, we're told that they were all full. God had given them exactly what they needed. But here comes test one. A trust that God gives you daily bread. Trust that God gives you daily bread. Because in verse 19, they're told, don't save any until the morning. You're going to collect it up every day. Don't save any till the morning. Now, Oliver, uh, so far you've, you've proven yourself to be a good, obedient Israelite. So off you go back to bed again. You trust that. Back to bed, into your tent. Lovely. Um, but some of the Israelites, they, uh, they thought they knew best. <laughs> uh, what if this good uh, flaky stuff doesn't come again in the morning? Right. Well, they pack themselves a little bit extra, don't they? A bit of lunch for tomorrow. So shh, keep it quiet. Well, you're not meant to keep it. So there you go. Put it in. Let's just put it there. And off they go to bed. And maybe they read themselves a bedtime story. And maybe they sing a little lullaby. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Close your eyes. You're asleep. How I wonder what you are. Up above the water. I like it. And in the morning, they wake up. And oh, what is that smell? Oh, whoa. they look at the bread that they brought yesterday back for themselves. And oh, oh, it's, it's disgusting, isn't it? Oh, it started to grow uh, maggots. We read in verse uh, 20 that there was maggots growing in it and it stank. Ooh, maggots, get rid of it. Oh, they failed. The test. Uh, Because as they peek out of the tent again in the morning, they see there is bread again. It has come again this morning. This weird, flaky, frosty uh, manna stuff has appeared again. They need to learn to trust that God gives you 
daily bread. I wonder if some of us need to learn that this morning too. Jesus teaches us to pray, doesn't he? Give us today our daily bread. He's pointing us back to this bit of the Bible. Do we trust that God gives us what we need every day? Or are we a bit more like the people who gathered up extra for themselves, trusting a bit too much in our own provision, trusting too much in our own plans? I wonder if that's us and if we're not in the habit already. Maybe we could make it a habit to pray the Lord's Prayer every morning, just reminding us as we start the day that God gives us what we need. Well, as we think on that, here comes test two. Trust that God gives you good commandments. Trust that God gives you good commandments. I can't really read that there, sorry. Because here's what it says in verse 23. This is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow is to be a day of Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. So bake what you bake, boil what you boil, save whatever is left, and keep it until the morning. God gives them what they need, a good commandment to rest. Uh, Genesis says, doesn't it, that God created the world in six days, and on the seventh he rested. Uh, So for six days the Israelites gather up the food, and on day seven they rest. So on day six, they need to gather up twice as much. So Oliver, uh, you've been our good little uh, uh, obedient Israelite, haven't you? So you gather up an extra portion for the next day, don't you? There you go, sir. Right, lovely. Right, and off you go to bed uh, with your extra portion. But some of the Israelites, oh, you remember, don't you? You remember what happened last time when you gathered up a bit of extra bread? Oh, the smell and the maggots. No, 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 this must be... God must have got it wrong. No, no. The bread's been here every morning, hasn't it? So, you know, you go to bed thinking, hey, I'll just get some extra today. So off we go uh, to bed again. And maybe we have a bedtime story. Um, And maybe we have a little lullaby. Twinkle, twinkle, little. Close your eyes, you're asleep. How I wonder why you are up above the world so high. And in the morning, they wake up. And it doesn't stink, actually. Uh, it smells quite fresh. And we, we look at the bread uh, that we've saved over. Uh, look at that, Oliver. Can you pass it, pass it forward? Lovely. Whoa. It's still fresh. Oh, it smells good. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, it's delicious. Wow. And there's no, there's no maggots either. And it doesn't stink. This bread is not normal bread. The other time, it got maggots and stank. But this time... It is fine. But what about the people who thought they might gather some extra? Well, look at verse 26 and 27. Six days you are to gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will not be any. Nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather it, but they found none. (laughs) You found nothing. It's been here for six days, hasn't it? But today, there is none. But as you go hungry, today. Well, it's going to help you to trust, isn't it? It's going to help you to trust that God gives good commandments. Right. uh, Thank you both. Uh, You've been excellent. Uh, Please go take a seat again. You can keep the hats if you really want. Let's give them a round of applause. You don't want that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Just finally and quickly then. Verse 28. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? Uh, the Israelites are not in Egypt anymore, are they? They need to learn, under uh, harsh masters, they need to learn that they've got a good God as their ruler. I wonder if some of us need to hear that too. Uh, Jesus has died and rose again and rescued us, so we no longer have sin. As our harsh master, we have God as our good ruler, and he gives good commandments. But sometimes our friends, uh, the world, don't uh, think like that, do they? They don't think God's rules are good. (laughs) What what are you doing? Uh, Still following this teaching from years and years ago. It's 2024. The Bible's, you know, old news. It's bad news. It's bigoted. 
And when we're told that, it, it can be hard, can't it, in the face of that, to trust that God's laws are still good for us today. You know what? God made us. He died for us. He knows what is good for us, and he wants what is good for us. And God doesn't change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is good, and his commandments are good. They always have been, and they always will be. So trust that God gives you daily bread, and trust that God gives you good commandments. God gives us what we need. Let me pray. Father God, as we see your gift of daily bread in the wilderness and the good commandment to rest, help us to trust that you give us what we need. Amen. Amen.